Hi, uh, in this video, uh, we're gonna start to introduce this idea of cardinality. Um, cardinality is how big a set is. Um, so let's jump right to it. Okay, so cardinality means size of the set. So um, to, before we introduce this, we here's some notation. Uh, if I write square bracket a number, uh, so square bracket zero, uh, that is an empty set. Uh, that's a set of size zero because there's no elements inside of it. Uh, and if I write square bracket some natural number k, uh, then that's a set with all the natural numbers one through k. Um, so there's, there's k elements in there, one, two, three, and so on, up until the size of the set k. All right. <clears throat> so uh, we call a set finite if there is a bijection between whatever that set is to this um, square bracket k. <clears throat> For some Okay, uh, so k could be natural number, and this time we're definitely gonna in include zero because set could have um, no elements inside of it, and zero should be a uh, possible size for a set. Uh, we say a set is infinite if there's no such bijection. So if you cannot find a bijection um, to one of these square bracket sets, then it's infinite. It's, it's too big to fit in the finite set. Okay. Um, so, I mean, that, that seems like an obvious thing to say, but we need to prove these things. Um, so, uh, proposition. So, this is, this is the proposition that's going to make the definition make sense. Uh, if there is a bijection uh, between two different um, square bracket set, then it has to be the same size same finite size. All right, so we're gonna do this by induction. Um, so the basis set, basis step, um, so the smallest possible size is zero in this case. So we're not gonna start the induction with one, we're gonna start the induction with zero. So if you have a function f uh, between a square bracket set to an empty set, um, fun function with no range could only make sense if there's no domain either. So the only way to have no domain is for the m to be zero, right? Um, because that's the, the only case where there's nothing in the domain. Okay, so um, the smallest case is when m is equal to zero. That's the only possible case. Uh, uh, if that's not the case, then we're gonna show it by induction. So let's assume that if you have a size uh, towards n, uh, square bracket n, then you have uh, m equals to n. So we're gonna we're gonna show that for the case uh, n plus one. Okay. So let's say uh, you have some integer m, a natural number m such that it maps into uh, the set square bracket n plus one. Uh, because we're doing with injection, uh, we know that this statement means m is equal to uh, n plus one if, if the n was smaller, right? So what we could do is we could reduce this bijection into something a little bit smaller. Um, so that's exactly what we're gonna do with this, in, this proof. Uh, so if we have this uh, bijection, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this range. So the range is uh, one, two, three, all the way up to n plus one. And we're gonna look at what gets mapped to n plus one. And then we're gonna remove that uh, from the bijection. So let's say R is whatever that gets mapped to N plus one. So we're gonna create a new bijection G such that it agrees with F 
if uh, x is anything before the number that gets mapped to n plus one, and then after uh, x is bigger than that, um, then we're, we're going to skip over r and then we're going to plug in r plus one. So we're going to hit everything uh, before r and after r uh, we're going to shift it by one. Right? <clears throat> okay, so this will start with one and go, goes all the way up to m skipping over one of that number r. So uh, now we have a bijection from m minus one because we skipped one item uh, up until n uh, because one through n is all hit because it's, it's a bijection. We skipped over n plus one. Okay, by the induction hypothesis that if you have a bijection between these two things, then m minus one is equal to n. And once we know that, we can add one to both sides of the equation and we get m is equal to m plus one, uh, which is what we wanted to show. Okay, so I hope that made sense. Um, okay, so if you have this, these square, square brackets thing that maps to one through n, then this m has to be n. You can't equate two different sizes. Uh, it's basically what this proposition is saying. Um, <clears throat> so a corollary to that is that if A is a finite set, which means it maps to one of these square bracket sets, uh, then there's exactly one N for this, uh, where there's a bijection from A uh, to square bracket N. Okay. So if there's one N that works, we're going to call that the size or the cardinality of the set. Um, and then we're gonna write that by absolute value of the set A. So that's what we're gonna mean by that. <clears throat> and you might think this seems like a really complicated way of saying finite number is a finite number. Um, but these type of things are not at all obvious uh, when we extend our idea of size to infinity. Um, or infinite sets. Uh, there's some weird uh, bijection we can write down um, that doesn't quite fit our intuition, <clears throat> at least until you see a lot of, lot of these things. <clears throat> okay, so here's the definition. We say an infinite set is uh, countably infinite, or uh, sometimes we just say countable. Usually countable means either finite or countably infinite, but um, sometimes people just use the word countable to mean uh, the size of the natural numbers. So, um, so we have a countably infinite set if there's a bijection from whatever that set is to natural numbers. So that means that it, it, has the same size as the natural numbers. If, if you can't find a bijection, we say it's uncountable or uncountably infinite. Okay. Um, so you might you might see very soon uh, this this countable covers a lot of the infinite sets that we're used to. Um, for example. Uh, clearly, natural number itself is countable. That's, that's the basis of comparison. Um, you could add one element, for example, if, if you're looking at natural number with zero included, uh, that is still countable, uh, right? Because uh, all we have to do is shift by one, right? One gets mapped to zero, two gets mapped to one, three gets mapped to two and so on. And you shift it in one element, but this is a bijective map because every element here is gonna give you a different element over here. Um, so it's, it's injective. 
I need surjection because every number is hit on this list. You just plug in a number that's one above it. So it's a bijection. It has the same size, uh, even though uh, it looks as if this is the exact same set with one element added. So um, you could, if you can add one element, you can add five elements or 12 elements, right? All we have to do is shift by that many. Um, so it's already more flexible than finite set, right? You could just add an element or remove an element and it still seems like it's the same size and, and it is. <clears throat> um, what about the set of integers? So you have the natural numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. We have the, the negative integers going negative one, negative two, and so on. And you also have zero. So this set looks like, well, it looks like it's kind of twice as large as natural numbers. Um, but this thing is still the same size. Um, integer has the same number of elements as natural numbers. And, and I can prove it using a bijection. So here's uh, what we could use. Um, if n is odd, we'll count uh, the negative integers. If n is even, we'll count the positive integers. So when n is equal to one, you plug it in here. One minus one is zero. Uh, so we count this element zero. When n is equal to two, uh, two divided by two is equal to one. So that counts this element. When n is equal to three, three minus one divided by two, uh, and the negative of that is negative one. And when I plug in four, uh, four over two is two. And maybe you can see that um, all the odd numbers uh, will count all the negative integers and uh, the even ones are kind of cut in half. So uh, that will still count all the natural numbers. This is a bijection, right? Um, every element will give you a different uh, output. Um, and also it's a surjection because every integer is hit with this function. Um, so that means Z integers have the same number of elements as natural numbers, um, which might be counterintuitive, but it's true. Um, <clears throat> you could, uh, the set of all prime numbers, uh, it's, a, it's a subset of natural numbers. Uh, this is countable, um, although we do have to show that uh, th there are infinitely many prime numbers. So as long as you, you can show that uh, this is more than, the, the set of prime numbers is not finite, um, then it's actually countable, which seems like a much more rare thing uh, than a natural number thing, but it, it has the same size. Okay. Uh, we could get even weirder. Um, if, if it's a two dimensional array of uh, natural numbers, so have like a coordinate system of N and M, so X and Y coordinate, uh, and then have infinitely many rows uh, of infinitely many dots. Uh, this thing is a countable set. Uh, and then way, way to create a bijection is to kind of count it as uh, in a diagonal fashion. Um, call this dot one. This is two, this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And as, as long as you kind of go, go through this uh, diagonal method, um, you can count all the numbers um, one at a time. And it'll be a bijection. So, because every, every uh, coordinate will be hit um, eventually. And um, I'm not 
too concerned with being able to find this complicated formula that would actually give this, um, but I, I want to prove to you that you can do it. So you can try to convince yourself that this is the, the order in which each number is hit. So for example, if I want to know when this number is hit, so this is uh, the point uh, two, four. So n is equal to two and m is equal to four. And you can plug it in this formula. Um, so m plus m uh, is six minus one is five and uh, six minus two is four. Five times four is uh, five times four is 20 divided by two is 10 and add two to that. So this would be uh, f of two, four is going to be 12. And if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So this number two, four was the 12th number to be counted, right? So you, you could write down a formula um, for it if you wanted, but I'm not too concerned with like, if you're clever enough to come up with these formulas, I'm more concerned with, can you describe a method uh, in which every element of the set is actually counted in a bijective fashion? So that's more of the important part. Um, and if you see this, argument, then maybe you could uh, convince yourself that the set of ra rational numbers, so rational numbers, remember, uh, is um, any number that could be written as ratio, where the numerator and denominator is an integer. Uh, such that the denominator is not equal to zero. Um, because what we could do is we can change these dots into fractions. So, um, so you first count to zero separately, uh, and then you can think of uh, arranging, oops, arranging um, all rational numbers in a grid Sorry, three over two, four over two, uh, and one third, and, and so on. So you can count all the rational numbers in a diagonal method. And you have to be a little bit more careful in the setting um, because some of the fractions reduce and that's a number that you've counted already. Um, but if you're careful enough, you can come up with a way to count uh, all rational numbers in a bijective way uh, and show that rational numbers is the same size as natural numbers, um, which is very surprising because rational numbers is absolutely everywhere um, on the real number, real number line. Anyways, um, that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, um, I will show you a set that is not countable, which is um, absolutely mind-blowing. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video.